Hello, my name is Xavier Trudeau, Application Engineer at CM Labs, and welcome to this video tutorial for Vortex Studio Cables Module 2, Creating Hooks and Loops. In this video, we're going to learn how to attach a mobile crane to a spreader and a concrete block at the press of gamepad buttons. In order to complete this tutorial, you will need um, the Module 1 of this uh, cable series completed, Vortex Studio and the demo scenes installed, as well as a gamepad controller connected to your computer. We're going to start with the mobile crane that we created in the first video of this cable series. The first thing that we need to do is set up attachment points that are going to be defined as hooks and loops in our components. Since attachment points are defined at the level of the assembly, let's find the assembly of our hook block. Under our hook block assembly, let's find the actual part where we want to create our attachment point. In that case, it's going to be the hook. So let's find the part for uh, this hook. In that case, it's named hook shackle. Right click on it in the Explorer and insert attachment points. Let's use the F2 key and rename it hook attachment. By default, the attachment will be positioned uh, exactly at the reference of the part, but in our case, we want it to be positioned inside of the hook. So let's use its uh, local transform to uh, position it well. Let's change its coordinates to minus 0 0.017 in the x-axis and minus 0 0.329 in the z-axis. Now save the assembly using Control S, and we'll do the same thing for the spreader bar and the uh, concrete pipe. So let's use the asset browser and let's find the assemblies for the spreader bar. So assemblies, spreader. So we'll use the spreader rigging workshop assembly. And we'll also find the concrete pipe, the concrete pipe large workshop assembly. Now let's add two attachments for this pipe. So it has only one part, so let's insert an attachment point that we're going to name it pipe front, and another one that we're going to name it pipe rear. For the first one, its uh, local transform will be modified to 4.123 meters and 1.12 eight meters in the z-axis. And the second one will be modified to minus 4.179 in the x-axis and 1.114 in the z-axis. Your attachment point should look like this. Let's save with Control S and uh, go back to our spreader bar assembly. Now the spreader bar assembly has more than one part but uh, they are well-defined. So first of all, let's uh, add an attachment to its uh, loop part that we're going to name loop attachment. Do the same thing for hook rear that we're going to name hook rear attachment. And for hook front, again, that we're going to name hook front attachment. Now your attachments should uh, look like this. Let's save the assembly using Control S and close all of the assemblies. Now using the Asset Browser, let's find let's find the mobile crane scene. So we'll use the mobile crane hook pipe workshop scene. Switching to mechanisms. We'll find our mobile crane no cable that we were uh, working on in the last scenario. Let's add it in the scene. We'll find our spreader bar. So spreader bar rigging workshop. And we'll find our concrete pipe. So concrete pipe large workshop dot mechanism. Let's use the move and rotate commands in order to position our mechanism uh, so that hooking will be easy.
now that our components are positioned, let's add uh, loop groups to our concrete pipe and our spreader bar. So let's look for loop groups in uh, the toolbox and add it. And we're going to rename it pipe front loop. Now let's set up its uh, anchoring points. Let's set the size to one. And let's look for uh, the pipe front attachment from our concrete pipe. And drag and drop it into the anchoring points. Let's also change its label size to one. And let's add the label named concrete pipe label. Now let's duplicate using Control D this uh, loop and rename it pipe rear loop. And the only thing we're going to change it's, is uh, its anchoring point, which will be pipe rear. The label will stay the same so that it doesn't matter which side of the spreader will be attached to our concrete pipe. Let's do the same thing again. So duplicate it and uh, rename it spreader loop. Now we're going to change uh, the label for this one to spreader label. And its anchoring point will come from our spreader bar. And we'll use loop attachment. Now we'll use the same principles in order to uh, define the hooks of the spreader and of the mobile crane. So let's look for the hook group in the toolbox. Let's rename it spreader front hook. Now, just as last time, change the anchoring point size to one and find the uh, hook front attachment and drag and drop it into the anchor point section. We'll also change the size of the label and rename the label concrete pipe label. As you can see, we're using the same label uh, as defined in the hook uh, in the loop groups of the concrete pipe because we want uh, the hook groups and the loop groups of the concrete pipe to be able to attach uh, to one another. Now let's duplicate this uh, hook group and rename the second one spreader rear hook. And we'll modify its anchoring point to hook rear attachment. Then use uh, duplicate again and uh, rename the third one mobile crane hook. We'll modify the anchoring point, of course. So we'll find the um, under the mobile crane mechanism, the uh, weight hook assembly and our hook attachment that we've created before. Let's drag and drop it to the anchoring points and of course change the label to spreader label. Again, we're using the same label as uh, we've used for the spreader loop uh, because we want the hook of the crane to be able to attach to the uh, loop of the spreader. Now that we have our hooks and loops defined, we're going to want to add logic uh, to them in order to uh, attach themselves when we press button on our gamepad. So for this, we'll need to add a joystick component, which will be our gamepad and a connection container where we'll define logic. Let's select our three hooks and find in the input section, the uh, hook Boolean, drag and drop it in our connection container. In our JSTEC component, let's find the X and B button. So here they're corresponding to button two and button three, but we'll want to use uh, the toggles of these buttons. So toggle button two and toggle button three. Now, since we want the X button, which is uh, button three to uh, attach 
our mobile crane hook to the spreader, we'll uh, link this uh, boolean to the mobile crane hook. Since we want the B button, so toggle button 2, to attach uh, the spreader to the uh, concrete pipe, we'll link the button 2 to uh, the two hook inputs of these. Now, going back to our 3D view, if we test our simulation, we'll notice that our, our hook and loop groups have uh, colors. So in that case, yellow is uh, unhooked. We'll be able to use our gamepad to control our crane. And we'll notice that when the hook gets close to its loop, it becomes green. Now we can try to press X. And we notice that uh, it's very hard to do. Not only the distance is, is, very, is very hard to get, and uh, it doesn't seem to be hooking. In order to fix that, we're going to have to go in our uh, loop components, and we're going to have to tune some uh, parameters. First of all, the hooking range of uh, 0.5 is, is a bit small, so let's change it to 1 meter instead, and change the extended range to 0.25 meter. If we look at the hooks component, we can look at hooking constraints and see that the attract max force is only 500 newtons. So let's change that to 5000. Now let's test our scene again. As we can see, uh, the hooking range is way bigger, so we're already at a point where we can hook our uh, mobile crane. So let's press X. And we can also see that uh, the attract force between the hook and the loop is much greater, and it makes makes it much easier to uh, to hook our mobile crane to our spreader.